my buddies! Welcome to a review video with Kim Tech. My name is Kim. Today, I'll be reviewing the TP-Link Deco BE16000 mesh system after having been using it for one month. This feedback is from my personal experience with my home layout, so my thoughts may be different from yours. This review is going to be split into the following categories. The look, the setup, the Deco app, connectivity, which includes speed, consistency, and coverage, privacy, and my overall thoughts. All links will be in the description box below along with timestamps, so you can skip to the sections you want. Okay, let's get on with the video. Let's start out with the environment the setup is in. Our home is 2,264 square feet with a secondary family room on the second floor. There are around a max of 20 total devices all online at once, with probably no more than five devices streaming all at the same time. We bought the TP-Link Deco BE 16,000 3-pack from Costco for $849 US dollars and 99 cents. And it advertises that it supports over 200 devices and can cover up to 9,600 square feet, so the specs check off our requirements. Okay, I was not expecting the deco units, the cans, to be so big. It's almost bigger than my face. Look, and I can barely hold this with just one hand. I feel like I'm working out when I'm holding this for too long. Anyway, just something to keep in mind when you are replacing your smaller units in case the height is going to be an issue of the placement. The cans are a matte white and the design has the number 7 cut out with multiple ridges, which is subtle from far away, but I find it to be a nice touch to remind me that I have Wi-Fi 7 router. This three pack comes with three router units with four of the 2.5 gigahertz ethernet ports on the back of each of the units. To be honest, that's quite a lot of ports, well, in comparison to my previous routers, so it's great for anyone who can use the wired backhaul. Setup was not bad. It didn't take long to set up once the router was pulsing blue, which indicates that it's ready to begin the setup. It's worth noting that you can use Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant enabled devices to control this deco with just your voice. But I don't own any of those things, nor do I want to use voice commands in my home, but the option is there if you are interested. The Deco app surprised me as it has more configs than the web interface, tplinkdeco.net. This is by no means a negative comment, just different. I don't remember when the app becomes more powerful than the web interface, but when I was trying to set up my port forwarding for OpenVPN setup, I had to set it up from the Deco app because the web portal didn't have the ability to do so. The one problem I originally had with the Deco app was its cache of the old network from the previous XE5300. It didn't matter how many times I tried to clear the network, it was still there. However, after a few weeks, it cleared itself out and my old network wasn't there anymore, which was good that it was able to resolve itself. Great. Now, MFA should be applied for any important account. So for a home network, it's definitely worth implementing MFA on the Deco app, or at least in my opinion. TP-Link finally did include this feature for their Deco app, which can be found when you tap on the three horizontal bars, view account, login security, there are two MFA options. One is using the Deco app to receive the code, and the other one is to receive the code with the email that you signed into the account with. It will not prompt for MFA every time you open the app. It says here that you will need both your password and a verification code when logging in from an unrecognized device. So when I try signing out and signing back in on the same phone, it didn't prompt me for a code. Next, let's talk connectivity. On January 8th, 2024, the Wi-Fi Alliance officially introduced the Wi-Fi Certified 7 program. But I've seen mention of Wi-Fi 7 floating around way before that, mostly for marketing hype. Wi-Fi 7 is what I like to call the human name of 802.11be. 
which is why I'm almost 100% certain that's how this model got its name, BE-16000. And not for the fact that maybe, just maybe, BE stands for the chemical beryllium on the periodic table. Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> Anyways, back to this. We strictly use the Wi-Fi and have not used the wire backhaul because our house is currently not capable. TP-Link states that the DECO BE-16000 mesh system uses Wi-Fi 7 standard with quad band capability, so it supports 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz, 6 GHz-1, and 6 GHz-2. Because this model is Wi-Fi 7, it supports 4KQM, 4096 quadrature amplitude modulation, and multi-link operation, which I'm going to oversimplify here, but 4KQM helps Wi-Fi 7 have a much higher speed and efficiency than previous standard when working with supported clients. For reference, Wi-Fi 6 only supports 1KQM. So in theory, Wi-Fi 7 is supposed to be really good. Then there's MLO, multi-link operation, which is supposed to make a Wi-Fi connection faster and more stable because the Wi-Fi connection between two direct devices, which can transmit simultaneously over several frequencies, pretty much the same idea as link aggregation and wire networking. Of course, these features work best in unison with other features such as multi-RU and puncturing, but we're not going into them here because they're way too technical and not the scope of this video. I only mention 4KQM and MLO because they're marketed on the TP-Link product website. Last but not least, the DECO 16000 promotes seamless AI roaming. This sounds fancy with the word AI, but honestly, it's something that Mesh System is already doing, which is to keep a close watch on the signal strength of your devices as you move around your home your devices connect to the optimal DECO unit to efficiently use your network bandwidth without breaking your connection to disconnect from one unit and connect to another. It may be smoother, but I honestly could not tell the difference. But with all these features, was the connectivity any better for me? Before I answer this question, it's worth noting that as great as all these features are, in a real environment, the theory may not perform fully to their capabilities due to various factors, such as your actual home internet speed from your provider, whether it's cable, DSL, or fiber, your home layout, and if you're like me and currently don't have devices that support Wi-Fi 7, then the router's full potential won't be realized. With all of that said, I am able to edit my videos from the Synology server, which is kind of a big deal for me. There isn't a lag like when I was trying to use it with the Netgear Orbi AX5400 or the Google Nest Pro. Although it's not perfect because I would get the spinning circle when I make major adjustments or making the adjustments too fast which doesn't happen much or at all when I'm editing locally. However, I'm glad to see the positive progress. However, the strange thing is my speed test results show that the internet speed is slower than the Deco AXE 5300 or even the Orbi AX5400. It may have to do with the MLO helping my connection to the Synology server, but not for my internet connection. I don't know really, but there's no noticeable speed difference that I could tell when browsing online or watching YouTube. It's just, I don't like seeing the lower speed test results because they lower my confidence for this product. So the big question is if this DECO Wi-Fi mesh system has the same privacy concern as the XE5300. Honestly, I don't see it. I cannot find any traffic going to Avira using either OpenDNS or NextDNS. Avira is the third-party security vendor that showed up when I was reviewing the DNS logs for the DECO XE5300. I searched for Norton as well, since TP-Link shared on their website that HomeShield is powered by Norton, but nothing. 
I also search for constant calling home of the BE16000, but didn't see anything abnormal. The only time it calls home to TP-Link is when I open the Deco app, where it seems like it's checking if I have certain features of the app enabled, such as Home Shield, which makes sense as it needs to determine if I should have access to those features. Other than that, nothing was out of the ordinary, at least with this model and current firmware. Don't know if this will change in the future with newer firmware updates or not. Guess we will see. Overall, I like the TP-Link Deco BE 16000s, although I cannot fully utilize the potential of Wi-Fi 7 just yet since our devices are not cool enough at the moment, unfortunately, but we'll get there one day. All jokes aside, I'm looking forward to the upgrades to realize the BE 16000s full potential. And the best part so far is I don't see any alarming privacy issue. Woohoo! We will see how long this will last though. Anyway, hope you all find this video helpful. If you do, please click the thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any questions, please feel free to put it down below. Thank you again for watching this video and have yourself a nice day or night wherever you are my buddies. Until next time, bye!